Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Shelby. Today I am doing my first episode in my Unresolved Disappearances series. We're going to be talking about a young lady by the name of Jody Lynn Brandt. When she disappeared, she was 16 years old. It was 25 years ago to the date, Memorial Day weekend of 1994. Jody lived with her mother and her stepfather. Their names are Donna Gully and Robin Gully, and her father and his family lived in Michigan. And this is where Jody was originally from. <laughs> she moved to Georgia, <clears throat> excuse me, only a few years before she went missing. So Memorial Day weekend, Jody decides that she wants to go and visit her cousins up in Pontiac, Michigan. Now, her brother Joe had recently installed a stereo system in her car, so Jody looked at this as an adventure and she was going to sing along and it wasn't going to be hard for her. She was just going to go straight up I-75 north to Pontiac. Now, somewhere along the lines, Jody took a wrong turn and she got lost. We believe this to be somewhere around Toledo, Ohio area. If you know this area or you're a local, you know that it is almost always under construction. So what likely happened was there was maybe a lane shift and Jody wasn't paying attention and she took a wrong road. Now, Jody had left very late at night on May 27th or very early in the morning, May 28th. She calls her family at 6 p.m. on May 28th and tells them that she's lost and she believes she's in Erie. Her family tells her that if that's true, she's not actually lost. She can just keep going north up Route 24 and she'll make it straight shot right into Pontiac. Now, this is where things go bad for Jody, and I believe that she met with foul play in this time frame. So 6 p.m. she calls, says she's lost, and then shortly after 10 p.m. her car is lit on fire and abandoned in Ottawa Lake, Michigan, which is in Monroe County on Turk Road, which is a very rural area. It's completely surrounded by cornfields and very, not very many houses at all. So when her parents realize that Jody hasn't made it to her destination, by May 29th, they decide that they're going to go up to Michigan themselves and they file a police report with the Pontiac Poli Police Department, a missing persons report. And they weren't using internet readily like we do now. Her car and the missing persons report weren't connected for about another day. So her family starts to drive up to Michigan and along the way they are putting missing persons flyers around truck stops that they believe Jody may have stopped at. When they stop at one off Interstate 75 and Michigan Road 50, the clerk that's working the counter tells them that she recognizes Jody and that Jody was in the day before, so the 28th, around 5 p.m. and that this is about the time that the clerk shift was ending. So this is believed to be Jody's last call home where she says she's lost. Now, during this time, this is when Jody's car is found, but her family isn't notified of it yet because they don't know whose car it is. When her car is found, all the paint had been completely burnt off and burnt off of the license plate. So when the police find it, they don't realize it's an out-of-state car until it's sent over the radio and scanned through all states, and that's when they realize that it's a missing girl's vehicle from Georgia. Now her family is brought to look at the vehicle and her brother Joe notices that there's a dent in the back fender that wasn't there before. And they also realize that her seat is all the way back, which is very unlike Jody. They also tell the authorities that the mechanism to move her seat back was broken. So for Jody to move that seat all the way back, it would have taken a great deal of effort and she was a very petite girl. So this is bad signs. It shows that most likely we have a tall male driving Jody's car and it got dumped in Monroe County and Jody is likely somewhere else. So after her car is found, a helicopter is sent down as well as dogs and nothing is found to aid in Jody's disappearance. To add something else in that makes this case a little bit confusing is that this hadn't been Jody's first trip to Michigan. 
Jody made the trip about two or three days before, and she was tra transporting 10 pounds of marijuana with two male subjects. Now, Jody did this on behalf of a man named Roland, and she liked Roland. Roland had moved from Georgia to Michigan, and something strange about Roland is that two weeks before Jody's disappearance, Roland's father was actually killed. Now, the man was apprehended that killed his father, and Roland and his brothers were all questioned to see if they thought it had anything to do with Jody's disappearance, and they all said no. Now, the fact that Jody was carrying this marijuana in her car made Jody's mother and presumably Roland's family apprehensive to talk to the police because they could have all been apprehended for transporting and knowingly letting her transport drugs. And this made the case a little bit strained because all the help that was needed most likely wasn't given because of this fact. Now, because Jody was a high school dropout, she was in the drug crowd, she had a higher risk of bad things to happen to her naturally. Now, remember Jody's stepfather, his name is Robin Lynn Gulley. Robin had family in Michigan as well, and one of his cousins actually was shot and killed and dropped in Ohio with his vehicle. And what is weird about this is his vehicle was burnt exactly like Jody's. Now, the man that killed him was actually killed by law enforcement in August of 1994. So he was never questioned pertaining to Jody's disappearance. But Robin's relatives in Michigan were questioned to see if they thought that had anything to do with Jody's disappearance, and they also said that they didn't know how Jody would have known him. So that didn't help them either. Jody, whenever she made her last call, she had what was called a calling card, and this was back in the day when we didn't have cell phones. So she was able to make calls a lot cheaper than someone who would have had to use change. They checked the calling card and nothing on the calling card was out of the ordinary, so that didn't help them either. Some of the theories that have to do with Jody's disappearances are that she was ran off the road to be abducted, she was ran off the road for someone to steal her drugs. Someone may have known Jody was coming back up and assumed she was carrying drugs, but with this trip, she wasn't. The only thing she was carrying was her two pink suitcases and her roller blades, which were completely burnt up in the fire. Another theory is that maybe Jody left Georgia with a male, and that's why her seat was pushed all the way back, and he actually drove her to Michigan. And somewhere along the way, Jody could have actually been dumped somewhere else and her car just made it to Michigan and not her. One last theory is that Jody was a runaway. I do not see this theory as being valid because one, Jody made sure to make her car insurance payment before she left Georgia. Her brother had just installed that really nice stereo system in her car and Jody loved her car. She would have taken her car with her wherever she was going to go. So we know that Jody met with foul play and Anytime remains are discovered around the southeast area of Michigan or the north northern area of Ohio, they are checked against the DNA on file for Jody. And to this day, nothing has been found pertaining to her case. When Jody went missing, she was 5'3", about 117 pounds. She had blue-green eyes, blonde hair two tattoos. She had JB on her left thumb and then she had a cross with radiating lines on her ankle. She smoked marble red cigarettes and she was wearing likely athletic shoes, blue jeans, and a white shirt that may have had a cow print on it. I just want to say by making this video I hope that I do not offend anyone and I hope that her family can have peace and Jody can be found. If you have any information, even anything that could be small to help in her case, please call the Michigan State Police Monroe Post or the Oakland County Sheriff's Department. If you have any questions for me, comment them below. If you have any cases that you would like me to review and do a video on, comment it down below and subscribe for more videos. 
Thanks. Thanks.